Cast your minds back yonder, my friends, to a time much simpler, one of great innovations, plagued, however, by a backdrop of rampant racism and political corruption. Once upon a time, some old people wrote some old books, and then 100 years later, Grigory Rasputin, working under the pen name Alan Moore, put them all into a superhero comic. Then, not quite that long later, someone turned that comic into a film. Barely, I mean. Maybe if you squint a little, it's the same thing? Moore's vision for the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was a disturbing deconstruction of both its classical source material and comic book tropes. Often he would highlight flaws and elements of each character that the viewing public would probably prefer to ignore, and why putting them all in the same room together is going to end badly. The movie is a dumb action flick with public domain characters. And just take a guess which it is I like more. Hey. Listen, some days you just need to sit down and watch Sean Connery impale someone on a mounted rhino horn. Is that so wrong? But I digress. If we're going to assemble a league, extraordinary or otherwise, we're going to need something for them to assemble against. Let's see, what do you got? Dang. That takes some serious guts. Give that man a posthumous medal. Enter the Phantom. Spelled with an F because this is before phonics were invented. And don't let the skull mask fool you, this was just the fashion at the time. What does he want? I want the world. Well, too bad, I saw it first. Through the use of advanced stolen weaponry and a frankly reckless disregard for proper Zeppelin safety regulations, the Phantom manipulates the world to the brink of war more than 10 years early, seeking to kick it off at an upcoming peace conference in Venice, which if he has his way, will become a multiple peace conference. All of this brings a man named Sanderson Reed to Africa in search of the legendary explorer, Alan Quatermain played by the equally legendary Sean Connery. And I'll regale you with how I found King Solomon's mines. Time has not been kind to you, has it, Sean? <laughs> Wrong quarter, me. Okay, so did you actually retire? Or did the courts have something to say about this? If you want to talk about a subpar film with perfect casting, look no further. Between contrived writing and some, well, bad dialogue, Connery sells it. And by all accounts, he did not enjoy making this movie, so this is someone who is awesome whether they like it or not. Personal tragedy has left Quartermain a troubled man who wants to put his life of adventure behind him. So if he's going to join the League, it's going to take something big to convince him. Yeah, like that. Waiting to welcome him back to England is a familiar name with an unfamiliar face. I'm known by many names, Mr. Quartermain. My superiors call me F. In that case, I'm just gonna call you Jack, if that's all right. Jack Ass. Just M. <laughs> Whatever, Jack Ass. He introduces Quartermain to his fellow League members, starting with Nemo, captain of the Nautilus. And frankly, I don't think I have ever seen a more glorious human being. You don't think he has to dress like that, do you? No, look, his first mate Ishmael dresses like this, because only Nemo can pull that look off. If this guy abducted me into his crusade against the surface world, I would say, no thank you, but you have got style, sir. And he's not just a pretty face. In fact, Nemo's the backbone of the whole team. He's got the headquarters, the gadgets, the manpower, and he's no slouch in a fight. Draw your pistol! I walk a different path. You magnificent bastard, I read your book! And we both know that's not true. That aside, this is a great first showing. The rest of the team had better be something special if they want to compare to this. Special Agent Sawyer of the American Secret Service. This film's version of Tom Sawyer, who wasn't in the original comic, is a government agent who likes his guns almost as much as he likes the ladies. Just the way Mark Twain intended. Am I late? Please tell me this is Harker's wife with a sick note. Oh, Alan, you old white man. 
This is Mina Harker, a former school teacher and chemist, which are both very useful talents, but what qualifies her for a position in the League was a life-changing run-in with a radical nobleman in central Romania. Is the vampiric sucking of people's blood the radical behaviour? You haven't been to Australia, have you, Miss Harker? Right, so... In the comics, Mina was team leader rather than Quartermain, her power being the ability to keep the other freaks and criminals in line, whereas in the movie... They told me European women had bunny eyes. A man's neck is in her stomach! I like Sean Connery and I like vampires, but this is a step backwards no matter how you look at it. But a cool step backwards? Can you do that? Allow me to introduce myself. Rodney Skinner, Gentleman Thief. Oh, this guy. Those of you better read than I may recall that the Invisible Man's name in the book was Dr. Griffin, and he was not a very nice Invisible Man. He wouldn't even share his film rights. So instead we get Rodney Skinner, who, to me at least, is easily the best part of the entire movie. First of all... Cheers. That. He is simultaneously the best and worst special effect in the whole picture. I normally don't even like these charming thief characters, but the man really is that charming. As a matter of fact, I decided to invite Skinner onto the show and caught up with him just a little earlier. So, Rodney, uh, you don't mind if I call you Rodney, do you? What was your take on the film's infamously troubled production? I spent way too much on this suit. Way too much. The group heads off to pick up the sharp-dressed and debonair Dorian Gray, who actually has something of a history with Quartermain and Mina. That is to say, he's had sex with one of them. Oh <laughs> yeah! In his possession is a magic painting that takes all the unsavory effects of age and injury for him, keeping him alive and well so long as he doesn't look at it. Which is fine, it's probably not that good anyway. And on the topic of not dying, he's quick to bring up a little tidbit about Quartermain, that he was once blessed by a shaman, claiming that Africa would never let him die. But you're not in Africa now. That, mate, is where you're wrong. The final member to recruit is of course none other than Henry Jekyll's bad mood, here depicted as the prerequisite big guy that every superhero team apparently needs to have. And I think I'm okay with that. The strength of the Incredible Hulk and the fashion sense of Uncle Pennybags! He's even got a little cane! Run! Run, you resplendent creature! Let no man cage you! Live free! <laughs> no. I didn't think I'd be as upset as I am. Ow! You scratched me. Yes, I did. Right, just so we're clear then. And so, with all our Victorian-shaped pieces on our Nautilus-shaped board, the League must confront an even greater challenge before they confront the nefarious Phantom. I don't want to play with that toy! No, I want to play with that toy! No, I want to play with that toy! No, I want to play with that toy! That toy! THAT TOY! <laughs> to the film's credit, they balance the cast out better than you'd expect. Everyone does get their time to shine. Even Sawyer gets a few really good scenes with Quartermain, and I don't just mean over-the-top fun stuff, I mean genuinely emotional moments. Still, we suffer through an unfortunate case of what I like to call Wolverine Syndrome. Out of a full ensemble, they try to sell us on the least interesting character of the bunch. But it is Sean Connery, so it does even out. If you require any help during the voyage, Mrs. Harker, just let me know. Boy, I shall literally eat you. Basically, if you've got a favourite, latch onto them and watch their scenes frame by frame because you get what you're given and what you're given isn't as much as I'd like. Skinner, he's taken a vial of my formula. Really, Jekyll? Just because he's invisible, hasn't been seen in a few days, and happens to work as a professional thief? That is pretty rich. This does come at a bad time, though. If someone's going to betray us, can't they wait until after we've saved Venice? 
We're just lucky Nemo's a goddamn professional, so finding the Phantom's bomb is a full-scale operation. Shouldn't take too long. Get in, loser! We're fighting crime! No! Hi, you'll never use me again. But what the hell are you doing here? The plan to stop this destruction involves causing further destruction to interrupt the chain of destruction. And if you're into those facts the kids love so much these days, you might know that Venice doesn't actually have roads like this. Anymore. This might also be a good moment to share some tips for the budding supervillain. A tip one, if you're going to destroy a city, do not be in that city while you're destroying it. Tip two, Make sure you follow tip 1, because that is really basic information. And tip 3, if you did not manage to follow tip 2, maybe you're just not cut out for this line of work. Wow, look! There goes the Phantom! And look! There goes his dignity! It says in the script that we're meant to be fighting! Why are you running away from me? They told me they couldn't afford the real Sean Connery! <laughs> Jackass! Well, of course. It was so obvious, I was too smart to see it. So the man behind the league is the man they're trying to stop? I don't know how this could get any worse. I do. Bang. Bang. See, I told you I wasn't the traitor. When, when did you get here? I've been here the whole time, mate. I just don't like you. It's not enough to kill Nemo's first mate and steal his stuff. Oh, no. Dorian and M went to the trouble of making a record for the express purpose of gloating. And nothing else, I'm certain. Oh, I guess this time... I know this might look bad, but Nemo actually provides a really good healthcare package, so none of his men actually die. <laughs> Except Ishmael. As it happens, the League itself was a scam. With Dorian's help, the budding warlord can now buy their own advanced weaponry, invisible spies, immortal soldiers, and hulking monster men. The ultimate soldiers for the ultimate war, courtesy of M. Or would you prefer Professor James Moriarty? In fact, my loyalty to Mr. M comes in no small part from his possession of something I hold very dear to my heart. What a thing to say! Allow me to now exposit to you why he needn't have said that. It was an obvious statement, you see. The audience, meaning you and I, could piece together that information through the clues provided earlier during the narrative, or in some cases, through revelations revealed naturally throughout the story later on. To reiterate, it does appear that this uh, bit goes on for quite some time. Uh, I shall skip ahead, if that is alright. That might have been it for the League, were it not for the Jules and Verse Submersible Insurance Company! Now we have a boatload of pissed off superhumans with a common enemy to overcome their trust issues on. And because Moriarty let the ultimate stealth agent roam free instead of taking the skin sample he needed and killing him when he had the chance, they know exactly where to find him. Give me some credit, mate. Without my sneaky switcheroo, they'd have never found the baddies' fortress. Well, look, it's not that it's your fault. I'm over here. Please put some pants on. How many times do I have to kill these cretins? Goodness, it's almost like assembling a superhero team to oppose you was the worst idea you could have possibly had. Don't worry, though, I'm sure it's bounced out by all the other brilliant decisions you've made. <laughs> And subsequently, the League tears his empire down around him. Skinner sneaking through, planting bombs, while Nemo and Hyde free the families of the enslaved workforce. Ooh boy, I'm betting you guys are wishing you had one of those, huh? Good idea! Didn't you see the button prompt? Huh? I really gotta start checking this stuff before I start filming. 
It must feel good to be on the side of justice for a change, huh, Hyde? I want you to know that today, to me, you are a real hero. And of course, Mina has a few choice words for Dorian. A phrase which here means a sharp implement. We'll be at this all day. I hoped I'd get to nail you one more time. Literally! I didn't think it'd be literally. Oh, God damn it. You know, I was wrong. That is a good painting. Even Skinner faces off against a deadly counterpart of his own. You're not funny, you know that. Who are you, my mum? Honestly, this is a great final battle. No one gets sidelined or stuck with an easy job. Everyone contributes. My only real complaint comes from earlier. We know that most of the League were originally bad guys, but we never really see them do anything wrong. Believe you me, I much prefer Skinner over Griffin, but seeing them work together might have had a little more impact if we'd seen them as anything but straight-laced heroes up to this point. I eat people. Well, yeah, but only bad guys. Their families weren't bad. They were delicious. As for Quartermain, I'm a fucking kill ya! We're just rebuilding! I'm gonna find a fucking head you won't! There'll be others like me, Quartermain! I'll fucking kill them too! You can't kill the future! Watch me! You ever get tired of being wrong? The League? Me gotcha! Alright, we'll call it a draw. Well, Sawyer, looks like this is your moment now. I'm sure you can shoot an unarmed fleeing man in the back just fine. Ah, oh, here we... No, this isn't the moon. Bedford, what did you do this time? And so ends the famed Napoleon of crime. He died doing what he did best, running away from a fight that he started. And instead of a world in ruins, he leaves only the heroes born from outcasts and monsters, triumphant and unscathed. My skin hurts. Why do I have a headache? There's no blood in my arm. <laughs> After all is said and done, the formation of the League might have been a lie, but the good they did was very real. So Nemo offers his hand to the others, feeling that there was more they could do for the world. But what other threat could possibly top preventing a world war? Well, how about a war of the worlds? The second volume of the comics pushed forward with the Leagues going up against the Martian tripods, and the plan was for the film's sequel to follow. Instead, we got an actual War of the Worlds movie. There you go, that's half of what I wanted, but why didn't we get more LXG? Oh. That too. Well, Skinner, it's been nice having you here. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us today. It's just seven more pages of this. Worried that you enjoyed this comedic overlook of a poorly received motion picture, I now implore you to comment, like, and subscribe to this moving picture channel so that you may receive more of its content in the days to come. Have an art, duckies. Jesus! Was it something I said? What's in this drink? <laughs>